Get your stinking rat out. It's Late Night Large. Welcome to a Late Night Large, unapologetically aiming fireworks at police helicopters. I am your holy Roman candle, Aaron Bliss, and your filthy ladyfinger is Mike Large. How are we doing, Mike? Yeah, all right, yeah. Yeah, not too bad for you. Yeah, I'm uh, even more tired than usual. You know how it is when you've had like a week off work. I don't know if this happens to you, but you have a week off work. What, a week off work? (laughs) Yeah. Well, yeah, I was going to say, you probably is alien to you, but if you have a week off work, you almost invariably have a terrible night's sleep on the Sunday night before you go back. I think it's just, whether you're a naturally anxious person or not, you know, I think I used to have it with school as well. If the, you know, if there's anything that you think, oh, I don't want to have to get up. Mm-hmm. I used to. I used to for school. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, the, the after the summer holidays or like half term or whatever. Oh god, yeah. It just. Yeah. You, know, you, you you can't. I mean, hopefully everyone can understand, or most people, but that the level of grieving bereavement that you had as a kid when it was the last day of the summer holidays like and then you get to be an adult and you think that's you know hopefully you'll never feel that bad again it's like oh this is like the normal now (laughs) you wait (laughs) yeah we just need to recalibrate this is normal emotion uh so yeah i didn't didn't sleep a wink last night so hopefully i won't be too erratic (laughs) we won't hold our breath yeah thanks so what's happened in the uh, in the world of covid since last we spoke mike oh man i'll tell you what well i mean what can you fucking say now you you want to you know no matter what your your um your political allegiances are um or your personal thoughts feelings agenda even you you want to it becomes a point where you just you can't you should be for most humans you can't just be negative all the time you don't want to just be negative and just you must get bored of slagging people off or 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 an institution or something you can't you must get bored whatever it is you can't maintain it forever you just you become bored of it in yourself um but uh, they don't make it very easy, do they? <laughs> That's what I mean. Uh, you know, yeah. well, I think yeah. we've, we've look, look, listen. So we're in this lockdown, right? Um, lockdown. Um, if you if you ask what you can call it, yeah. Um, we have been for a while, and we will be for another couple of days. Obviously, time of filming. Um, now. <laughs> Yeah, that that's bad enough. A lot of people didn't want it. A lot of uh, most people probably understood it, but a lot of people didn't want it. Like, oh no, not again! And do we really need to? And not much has been done really to appease the people that think. Well, you know, a lot of people think. Well, do we really need to? So, uh, if the answer to that is and genuinely is yes, then you'd you'd expect to have understood that by now would be made to understand that by now so like, actually yeah do you know what we did need to this is why not just oh here's some figures that uh, may or may not be accurate but actually you know you can give all the justification for doing it at the start but when you get to the and you know maybe you understood it to begin with then but when you get to the end and you come out into these tier systems okay that's not a bad idea so we as we will be doing come out into the tier systems and you know it makes sense to do that. It's it you know that it's logical, but most of the country seems to have got worse according to the tier system that we're using during the lockdown. So not only were people at the start okay, maybe you made them understand it for a while. Here's some figures. Isn't it scary? Um, you know, if you make people understand that way, we need to do a lockdown. This is why. Okay, cool, and then. It appears to have done the opposite to act to help, or or has it? 
So the, the, the numbers now, are presumably, we're going to come out of it. So, you know, I don't know all of the facts and figures, but the numbers have improved, right? Overall. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, so if that's the case, why, say, take our area as an example, and there are many, many others like it, how have we gone up a tier? How, I don't, so either something was very flawed, at the beginning, with regards to the tier systems, and I, I get it, they were new, so maybe that's the case, but th they were flawed at the beginning with regards to what the tier systems were, what they should do, or who should be in what tier. Or they're flawed now, or, and, you know, or the lockdown was completely unnecessary and a load of bollocks. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, it's, what, something has to be true there. Something has to be true. We can't be, we can't be tier one, have a lockdown which you're told is absolutely necessary and is going to help, get taken out of the lockdown, but then put in tier two. So, uh, okay, we're well, worse. Um, so to take those points on, Mike, I think uh, I think you're definitely right about them being misguided. But I think we'll have an explanation of the tiered system, <clears throat> which we'll discuss in a little bit. <clears throat> the, the reasoning, I think. <clears throat> so, just to just to set the scene a little bit, this, uh, as you'll see, this this edition we've called Winter of Discontent, because as Charles Dizer once uh, so eloquently put it, now is the winter of our discontent. Um, you people who are verily afflicted by covid plague at the moment do not realize that even worse travails lie down the line in 2021 we shan't discuss those at length right now we're going to stay in the here and now and the next week or two but in terms of the winter of discontent the reason um i decided to stick with that is because first of all winter is now upon us you can feel the weather changing we're headed rapidly towards midwinter um we, we I mean, as of recording, we're last day of November, but by the time this goes out, we'll be in December, we'll be in the Advent period. So we are officially in winter. Um, and the reason it's winter of discontent is because nobody is really happy. There are dispersed groups in the UK and all of them are unhappy for various different reasons. And there are various different problems, various different uh, disagreements with things that are happening in all parts of the UK. We're just going to focus on two or three of the big changes since last time. So let's start with what you were talking about, Mike, when you were saying, why the hell have we come out of a lockdown, which by the way, again, we keep saying lockdown. It's a generic term. Yeah, it, it is a generic term. It's, it's like the way we could call the end of the transition period Brexit. We, we've already exited the EU. So Brexit doesn't really exist in that sense. But we call it lockdown because it's easy to refer to as that. You, as we know, the biggest transmitters, educational establishments were still open. So that could be one suggestion as to why particularly some city areas may have gone up because of course, educational establishments were still open. But let me suggest, Mike, when you say, why are we in a harsher tier? when we were in a less harsh tier prior to the lockdown starting, is it because of Santa Boris deciding that he didn't want to be the Grinch? Because this is one of the big announcements, isn't it? Since we last yes. went on there, which yeah. is, and I think we predicted actually, I think we did predict it on Late Night Large because we know how Johnson's mind works. So Johnson doesn't really have a grasp of the details. We know that he'll, He'll tell little fibs and massive lies, depending on what serves his purpose from one week to the next. But he's a politician. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a modern politician, you could argue, because politicians in the past massage the truth. Johnson just outright tells complete fiction. And the reason we said he would do this is because the last thing Johnson wants is to be unpopular, particularly unpopular with the newspapers. So the last thing he was going to do was lock everyone down over Christmas. So let's discuss this, Mike. Johnson announced a few days ago, uh, prior to recording this, that we would be allowed for a five day period to mix with up to three households indoors 
over the Christmas period. What do you think about that? Right. Is that foolish or? Right. You know, what? I mean, okay, okay, yeah. So lockdown gets to end. That's that's lockdown finishes. That's that's the that's the that's the headline. Okay, first and foremost, there what you said. But we're entering into the tier system again. Okay, so so he doesn't appear the bad guy. He ended the lockdown. Yeah, we got the tier system, but we had them before. Remember? All right, briefly. So yeah, it's lockdown's finished. Tears, cool. Um, thanks for that. Appreciate it. Um, brilliant. And that's why everyone's moved into a harsher tier. Nearly everyone has moved into a harsher tier than they were before, because it's just it's not actually an end to lockdown. It's just an easing of it. So right. we can say that lockdown's finished, but still keep restrictions in place to a degree, as if it hadn't in some places. It's not. Come on. I mean, yeah. But <laughs> right. So that happens. But but. Don't worry, Boris, he's been on the blower, hasn't he? he? He ran COVID HQ, right? And just said, listen here, look, everyone's a little bit sad at the moment. Winter of discontent, you might say. Um, you know, it's a bit of a shit time. Give us four or five days, will you, over Christmas. Just don't don't transmit, don't spread, don't kill anyone. Don't, don't do any of that stuff because, you know, Christmas, isn't it? Fuck's sake! What? What? And listen, listen. If it's if it if it's part of um, if there's a calculated risk based on fears over people's mental health, for example, you know, and we've had, we've done things like that in the past um, during this whole debacle, you know. Okay, then maybe you say, well, okay, there is some justification, but. It just seems fucking dumb. Do you know what I mean? Very, very succinct. Um, I, I've got to say, I mean, I, obviously I completely concur. I, I honestly... So, let's try and look at it really generously. Really, really generously. So, I agree with you that the biggest thing for me is you could legitimately make the case it could be incredibly damaging to vulnerable people's mental health which has already taken a massive battering but again why five days i mean five days doesn't make any sense to me why not two you can see them well, on christmas and boxing day I, I, well not everyone will be able to do that and you know some some people a bit work and you know some that, that's why they have to you know if you just said oh you get this day well i can't do that day tough shit then you know, you have to, you have to have some leeway. I think that's why. But then, people, there will be people that would use all of those days. And exactly. Why wouldn't, yeah. you? why wouldn't you? Like, there'll, that's, there'll I don't think that's what use, they're for. But there'll be people who use all those days, and they'll literally be going all over the country potentially, seeing different yeah. family members. Two days in this household, with only a couple of other households. Two days in this household, only a couple of other households. But then, to be honest. Is that really, cause it's, you know, it is primarily family, isn't it? Okay, some people usually friends and things like that. I can understand. But is that really going to do any damage, I suppose, actually, when you think about it, in comparison to the amount of damage that you get from, say, sending kids to school? I mean, there's far more inter-house mingling that goes on there. So the other argument would be then, if you wanted to, if you wanted to, you know, put one forward, is well, if we can send kids to fucking school, well, why can't why can't a few households mix? Okay, what about this? What about this then, Mike? What about if they genuinely want to limit the chance of COVID transmission during this five-day festivity period? <clears throat> why not ensure that schools break up early so there's a fourteen-day period minimum? between them breaking up and the festivities being allowed. Therefore, even if the kids contract COVID, which we know that kids have been doing at school, they have a 14 day period to get it out of their system so they don't transmit it to elderly relatives over the Christmas period. Is well, that a stupid suggestion? 
That's actually a really fucking good suggestion that I hadn't thought of, and that obviously they haven't. Um, that, uh, that's a great idea. The only thing I would say is, would it need to be more than 14 days? Because it's okay, so you get a kid, come back, and then, mm. um, you, then you know, the rest of the household has to isolate for 14 days because they could get it, say, a week later. So then how long would you need to actually... You, you could never yeah. get rid of it. But you're right, you'd minimise it if you said 14 days before. No, yeah, like yeah. schools shut. Well, when do yeah, schools yeah. shut? Yeah. They'd only be like a week early, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think it'd probably be a week because they're probably still trying to catch up on all the time they miss. But I is... get that it's not ideal. But is it is it more ideal for um, elderly relatives to be buried their elderly in relatives? January? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, this this is this is the argument, Mike. It's uh, I'm not like you know I'm not a consultant for the government being paid seven thousand pound a day. But if I was. I would probably. I wish I was. Um, if if I was, I I would suggest that. And and the point is not that it's foolproof. It's that it's an easy thing to do. And it clearly must minimise transmission. Does it completely eliminate the uh, risk of transmission? No, of course it doesn't. If you wanted to do that, you'd have to break up schools a month or so ahead of. Yeah. But that's not practical. So using practicality using the 14 day as that's when how long we're supposed to isolate for that would make a huge difference i think if unless unless they genuinely don't think there's going to be any danger of increased transmission during those five days wow i mean and if they and if they think that then what the fuck is this lockdown being about well yeah you tell me I've... if into house mingling you know and if people can only do it for five days you can be sure they're going to do a fucking month's worth of mingling at least in those five days. Oh fuck yeah! Like, do you know what I mean? So, what's the point of having a fucking lockdown for in the first place then? Or is the lockdown like let's just get figures down enough so we can have no. a blowout at Christmas, and then? <laughs> <laughs> See, I mean, that's exactly what I was thinking. I, I'm, I, I'm afraid this government more than any other lets you be really cynical, doesn't it? I, that was exactly what I was thinking about what Johnson's plan was going to be. Get the rate down as low as he can, keep the backbenchers in line, and then get a little spurt of Christmas shopping, like restricted Christmas shopping, and then just Dionysian revelry for five days where the transmission rate goes through the roof again and oh you silly people we told you to be careful now we've got to lock down the whole of january because the, yeah. the the covid vaccine can't make it here because the no deal brexit means that the ports are clogged up and you know you voted for it so this is all the public's fault it's definitely not the government's i mean yeah i don't uh, look um Is like, like I said at the very start, it's very difficult to you. Know, you don't want to be negative all the time. You no. don't want to. I mean, what well, you do is you. Do, you don't want to be no, negative. No, no. All the time. You don't want to slag off <laughs> Boris and the government all the time. Like it does get boring. You do get bored of doing it. You do it think does. actually, am I just being? It? I mean, don't lie to me. You'd never get. You would never get bored of slagging off a Tory. I'm not having it. But you're you're the exception to the rule. Um, but <laughs> I, I just, I can't. I'm not at all, Mike. Honestly, I'm. You, I'm more on your side than you think. It. Good. Nothing would please me more than if Johnson had been ejected from office and I could shut up. And don't get me wrong, I'd still take shots at the government because all governments need to be shot at. But you're right. It's uh, ultimately being a human being is about. You know, you, you are how you feel. If you are relentlessly negative, it will make you physically ill. You have to have positivity. You have to have optimism, um, and you can't be continuously angry. You know, at the at the government that's supposed to be protecting you, doing things that's costing people around you their lives. Today, I heard that you know, so far at work, the scorecard at work is I've had one one colleague had to self isolate because her kid was at a school that had a suspected covid case another whose wife works at school is a teacher had to self-isolate after she tested positive and just had a third colleague whose brother's tested positive and asked to self-isolate so it's creeping up it's just creeping up all around people i know now and i'm just like Ugh. yeah you 
I mean, you wanna you wanna work in uh, you wanna work in retail again, mate. How do you think? Yeah. I mean, I won't go into it too much, but like, how do you think those? And and this is wow. Well, yeah, I won't say I won't say too much on it, but like, it's it's fucking mental. It's, I can imagine. It's, it's crazy. Well, I mean, I would imagine if if you were the manager or or in charge of a retail outlet, I'd imagine your your plan would be. Um, don't come into work if you feel ill or have any of the symptoms and we're not going to do any testing at work just in case someone tests positive <laughs> basically because because you'd be you'd be screwed wouldn't you in a retail environment if one member of staff tested positive what are you going to do close the store <laughs> you can't say it, can you um, okay well let's move on from that so I think we agree that I mean, by all means, if anyone wants to chip in and, and disagree, but I think me and Mike are both on the cynical train. Uh, Boris didn't want to be the Grinch, and that's for the reason why these harsh tiers are being put in place so we can set the stage for a massive COVID transmission for five days over Christmas. So, yeah, th for the five days of Christmas, my true love sent to me. Lots of beats. There'll be some gifs and memes and shit made about that one in there, about this yeah. five day thing. There'll be a. Yeah, yeah Boris but... in his sack with COVID. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so, yeah, so we, I think we've, we've got, we've got Boris's number on that. Other I, things. Well, well okay, yeah. other, other things that the government and Boris have decided. Uh, by the way, is, is Boris still supposed to be in isolation? You know where that you know he made up the fact that oh I have to go into isolation even though I've had it because because Dominic Cummings has left the government I didn't want to be asked to I mean uh, because somebody positive was in my midst is he still self isolating or is that over now you know I'm not sure you know no maybe it's just coming to an end anyway the other big news is obviously the new tier system now the interesting thing is so. There's three tiers. I heard somewhere the other day that there's two different forms of two of the tiers. I'm not even going to try and understand that. But there's tier one, two, and three in a weird, like reverse order because tier one is the least serious tier. tier That's how it was before. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, okay. We were in tier one before, which okay. was medium risk. And then tier two is high risk, and then tier three is very high risk. Yeah, um, I uh, to be honest, I think that's counterintuitive. I would have done it the other way around. I always think that people think tier one is most serious or top of the league of something. But yeah, I'm not sure it matters. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but yeah. So we've come into the tier system as of third uh, of December, or is it second? It's on the second, is it? Yeah, it ends on the second. So. 2nd of December, 99% of the country, literally 99% of the country is in tiers 2 or 3, which is high or very high alert. Do you know the only place on the UK mainland that is not in tier 2 or 3 is Cornwall? Yeah, I knew that, yeah. Yeah, and the only, the only other two places are actually islands. So the, uh, the Isles of Scilly and uh, the Isle of Wight, I believe. So those are the only places that are in tier one. Uh, the rest of us weeks are in tiers two or three. Our particular region, Mike, is tier two, so we're slightly more fortunate. Now, yeah. do, do you basically know what what these restrictions are about? Like the different, like I know it sounds stupid me asking you, Mike, but like I said, I'm quite tired today. So if you know, it'd be, it'd be hard, easier. What? more difference does it make to some how, how how much more does it impinge on your freedom if you're right. in tier three compared to tier two yeah i've seen a couple of memes about it and it sums up perfectly tier one points tier two points and chips tier three no points <laughs> i saw that yeah i knew you'd come out with that what else do you need to know well it's it's slightly off though isn't it because what no. it should have said, no, no, no. What it. it should, no. Listen, what it should have said is pints, 
for tier one, tier two pints with chips, not pints and chips, because that makes it sound like you're allowed more than you are oh. in tier one. Oh, right. Oh. As in, you can only have pints with chips. So all the pubs are closed then, and restaurants in tier three. Is that right? My understanding, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Oh, I also mean, sports. I think. Um, aren't gyms still allowed to be open in tier three? Don't know about that. Two, they are. Oh, they are in two. Okay. Three, I'm not sure. I think tier three says some. Tier three, this on sport teams and events and stuff it was really vague i can't remember i did read it not that we're in it but i did see somewhere anyway it said um uh sporting thing can be continued but you should avoid any sports that encourage contact or something i did, yeah i was i was i was confused by it so it basically can... golf everyone could play golf as is always the thing that's allowed isn't it um, I mean, by the way, by the way, even though a load of posh bastards play golf, you know, my hey. old man plays it and a lot, you know, there are a few working class types, usually retired. Yeah, Mike's not exactly a... Not always retired. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call you uh, retired or even an adequate golf player. But, I mean, yeah, I used to play golf, um, long distant past, but it's, um, no, it is pleasant. So I'm not, I'm not going to criticise that, but yeah, it's, again, it's just, is there is there any hard logic or science behind some of these things that are banned compared to things that aren't? But specifically, no. Mike, specifics. Yeah. I'm going to ask you again. Are you going to put your cynical hat on here? So probably. Man but let's Manchester, see. Greater Manchester, yeah. has a lower R rate, I believe, than Liverpool. And yet Liverpool has been put into tier two and Manchester has been put into tier three. Has it? I can't guarantee the first part, but the second part is definitely right. And there was a big outcry about it. Would you suggest that that, that might be, I'm just saying that with your cynical hat on, if the R rate isn't reflected by the tiering between Liverpool and Manchester, as in Liverpool is in a, more lenient tier with a higher R rate. Would you say that the Greater Manchester thing is more a case of punishment beatings for Andy Burnham disobeying the government? Hmm. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, you'd like to think that wasn't the case, wouldn't you? But do you know also... what? I thought I'd just ask you quickly because I actually did watch, because um, I do quite enjoy it, um, Piers Morgan ranting at government minister again on uh, Good Morning Britain. I forget which one it was, George Eustace, George, or George Useless as we know him. He appeared on Good Morning Britain and he said, um, obviously they're firing heavy questions at him. And one of them was about Liverpool versus Manchester saying, how, how can you justify when... Liverpool has a higher, or, or rather Manchester has a lower R rate than Liverpool, and yet Liverpool has been put into Tier 2 and Manchester has been put into Tier 3. And to be fair to George Eustace, he waffled, but he waffled quite professionally, so it sounded quite plausible. So he was sort of saying, oh no, it's not just about the R rate, it's about the, what did he say, prevalence, I think? He was like, it's about the prevalence. Now the problem is, Piers Morgan... Um, and sorry, I forget his co-presenter, Susanna. Yeah, they, yeah. They, didn't, they didn't press him on what exactly do you mean by prevalence? What, what's the difference between prevalence and R rate? Because we is it not the same? It, well, it's been drilled into it, isn't it? We know what R rate is. You know, people they've said over and over again, oh, this is the rate of transmission. What what does prevalence mean? E existing cases. So how does so how can you say that there's more existing cases? but there's a lower transmission rate. On what, on what basis does that logically compute? Anyway, they, yeah, didn't it press, they didn't press it harder. It might have just been weasel words. But what I'm saying is, I'm being fair to him. He did offer an explanation. Whether that explanation is worth anything, you know, you'd have to probably check that out. So do you think, like me, that that smells more of a... Oi, Burn, and we'll fucking show you for making us look foolish. Possibly. 
possibly. possibly. Yeah. Very, very diplomatic, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I wouldn't like to say, but I mean, it could be the case. It could be the case, couldn't it? I mean, I, it it's hard to understand what an alternate reason could be that's valid, anyway. But like you say, you, I mean, you said it quite well earlier. Um, yes, we do have to appeal to the dum dums. That's who we're trying to appeal to, to the simple minded amongst us, because you have to make it understandable. I'm not saying, you know, talk to them like children, but you have to make it very clear and able, able to understand logic. And if you do have disparate logic, as it seems there, then it's not really good enough to just have a government minister go, oh, prevalence. But will tell us what prevalence means and how does it differ from our rate? How does prevalence, how is it disconnected from our rate? Make us understand that and then we'll nod along and go, no, you're right, well done, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll accept that. But it's just, you know, waffle, no further questions. Well, that's it, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Mike, a really interesting point I thought of relating to this. I don't know if you picked up on this. <clears throat> Very interesting point. So let's use Liverpool, Manchester as a great example because, of course, what are they? yeah, because what because what are they? F footballing powerhouses, Liverpool, yes. Manchester cities. So Mersey, Manchester. But... Yep, the, the Mersey, Manchester divide. Yeah, d divide even. Now, Just... <laughs> tier two. One aspect of tier two, Mike, I don't know whether it slipped your mind or whether you saw this. Fans can go back you in. You are allowed controlled number of fans, spectators, in things like Premier League matches, right? But then you, then you arrive at the conclusion, if the tiering system seems to be not really rooted in scientific logic, what you're saying is that, say, for example, Liverpool and Everton Football Club can earn money with gate receipts. They can have a crowd advantage. Meanwhile, Manchester City, Manchester United can't do either of those things. Doesn't that, Mike, strike right at the heart of the level playing field that we would expect at the top level of elite sport? Well, I'm torn on that, actually, because obviously you know where my allegiances lie. But what, so the, whether there's, whether that's part of the reason behind the decisions that were made or not, I don't know. But what I would say is, and, you know, take those two areas of the country out of the equation for, for a moment. And just say generally across the board, what I would say is, um, because you talk about level playing field, do you, do, you know, should you, should you prevent clubs from making money because others can't? I don't well, that's, think, I, that's I, what I, I wouldn't, but I wouldn't call that level, level playing field, I call that spiteful. And I know that, you, you why, why would you say, that's, no, 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 you can't say... You don't agree not... with that at all? No, 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 no. I you, think... You, you, on, you I... honestly can't see the conflict. No, I'm not saying there isn't one. What I'm saying is you shouldn't sa You shouldn't cut everyone's nose off. Like, no, 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 no. You can't do that. You can't say... It's not fair to say everyone should suffer just because certain areas need to. I think you're missing no, my... No, no, what I'm assuming is that there is no um, kind of there is no bias put into it, and and the reasons you know say the tier systems, and if they are the ruling factor of the, whether you can or whether you can't, um, you know all the all the all the factors that have been decided in the decide decisions regarding which tier you go into are all fair, reasonable, logical, scientifically based, etc. So obviously I'm assuming that then no, I don't think you should say, like, you, you know, you say you've got a, a quarter of the country in tier three, so the other 75% of the country has to suffer as well. 
I don't, I don't, okay, why no, you... no, no. I, I mean, I'm glad why? you tempered that because that that was my argument. My my I, argument. I don't think you can say that. You can't say uh, Manchester United. You can't make any money on gate receipts. Therefore, Oxford United. You can't either. What? No, I'm talking about elite level. I'm talking about Premier League level, particularly. Well, because... professionals, professional, isn't it? No, but Premier League level is is the elite level. We're talking about the biggest prize. The, the yeah, league but you in... can't have different lockdown rules for the Premiership over the Championship, or League One or League Two, even for that matter. No, no, no. Di- <laughs> forget about what I'm saying, Mike. But there's two separate arguments. Okay, the number one argument is if you're going to do that, which I'm sorry, it advantages clubs like Liverpool and Everton ahead of the Manchester clubs. If that's a very small... That, if you do that, it has to be based in scientific medical evidence completely. Like, that has to be gone over th- with a fine-tooth comb. No, that, that's what I said, wasn't it? I'm, I'm assu- What I said was... No, you said my, you're assuming. Yeah, my, or, my, okay, my, my opinion on it is based on the assumption that... You can trust the government's judgment. There are genuine... You know, the tier system is done right and fairly, and based on science. If it's not, then that, that is a different, whole different conversation. Yeah. I mean, because if, if we look at, obviously, precedent, um, it's taken a Premier League footballer to do more for kids in poverty than the government did, for instance. But, yeah, no, I mean, th- that was one issue. So, yeah, I get your point, and I'm glad you stipulated that. So it, it must be rooted in incontrovertible scientific and medical data that those tiers are there because they deserve to be there and not because of any political agenda or bias. And then the other, but the other question, Mike, you, you know, you might say, oh, you can't stop clubs making money. I'm not, I'm not just talking about the money because to me, the money in the Premier League, gate receipts, other than the bottom few clubs, doesn't make a difference. It's the TV money. The big gate receipt question is below the Premier League. Now, I want fans to be back at League Two, amateur, non-league. Those are the clubs that desperately, desperately, desperately need gate receipts. Yeah, so you that's what I'm saying. And... You, can't, you can't say to one lower league club in another one, in no, one no, part no, of the country, no. you've got to go under because another part of the country... Well, I don't, I don't think any of them should be allowed to go under. But <clears throat> the difference is, Mike, you, you know, you're talking about a crowd of 2,000 people compared to a crowd of 40,000 at a Premier League ground. Now I understand that the Premier League are not going to allow full full grounds. It's probably they're probably going to be allowed to be I don't know a quarter or a third full or whatever. Yeah, you and, and also space. you can you can get thirty thousand people <clears throat> say in Old Trafford. I know they they can't do tier three but in Old Trafford and have much more space between them than you could. No, yeah, that's a fair point. Um, but my the things people forget though, and by the way, I'm not suggesting clubs have forgotten this. I'm just saying to you, saying, "Oh, we can have thirty thousand in the ground, and they'll have loads of seats between them. They won't be anywhere near each other." But you know, they still have to use toilets. They still have to move through concourses. They still have to get to their cars. So all of that yeah. is logistically potentially difficult to get them in and out of the ground. Make sure there's minimal contact. But yeah, okay. I mean, it's, it's doable. But you know, even with all those things taken into account, I think there is a question about. We know that crowds make a difference, and yeah, okay, maybe ten, fifteen thousand crowd is not going to make a huge difference compared to a fifty thousand yeah. pack to the rafters. But and I know what you're saying, but what I'm saying is, like the the government can't make a decision based on whether and as much as it pains me to say it whether Liverpool have an advantage over Man United in the Premier League like, well, that can't be that can't be clubs, that though. can't be oh, no but they're the ones you use so I use them in my example I did not I said Liverpool Everton Manchester United Manchester City okay so they can't say <clears> oh we can <throat> Liverpool and Everton will have an advantage over Manchester United and Manchester City. Therefore, they can't. That can't even be a factor in their decision. Nor should it be. Yeah, but you, you Mike, you're kind of misrepresenting my point there. It's not. No, no, it's not the government's responsibility to look after the interests of the Premier League. 
it's not the government's responsibility to look after anyone by the looks of it, but it's uh, their responsibility whether they neglect whether it or they not neglect certain areas. areas. <laughs> is, is yeah, that's a different all right, thing. All right. Um, no, I, I mean, th but the, you know, this is this is what Lane and Large is good for. We've got diametrically opposed viewpoints about the Premier League. You think it's absolutely fair if we assume that there's no agenda and the tiering system is applied correctly according to protecting people that club should be allowed to have limited fans within those tiers i still think that even though i kind of agree with that i still think there's an argument that that gives an unfair advantage and doesn't allow for a level playing field no the Maybe. problem is but i mean there's plenty of other things in football that don't allow for it. Oh, I know, you know, oil money, etc., etc. Okay, well, exactly. We we dis we've agreed to disagree. Last last point I was going to say, Mike, is um, <clears throat> yeah. I don't know. Did you did you see this story? I mean, we've talked about it quite a lot, as you can imagine, talking about the health minister in the middle of a pandemic. Um, but of course, everyone's favourite minister, the spineless jellyfish that is Matt Hancock. Um, was in the news the last week or so because it was revealed that one of the COVID contracts, I can't remember whether it was PPE or um, I might just quickly double check. Um, yeah, COVID testing kits. Matt Hancock managed to hand out a £30 million contract for COVID testing kits to someone who just happened to be one of his old neighbours and pub landlords. Now, there's no suggestion that this guy had ever had anything to do with PPE before that. What? <laughs> what? Yeah, it's as ridiculous as it sounds. No, no, no. Well, it gave, Seriously, it gave Google it. A 30 million, did you say? 30 million, con 30 30 million, million pound, pound contract to a pub landlord? Yeah. That happened to be a mate? That happened, yeah, but it used to be... <laughs> I'll, um, I'm kidding. Oh, he used to be mates with him at university as well, apparently. Oh, you couldn't fucking write it. Do you it's know? Do you know what? Do you know what? Actually, do you know what, actually, the, the I, I know I acted shocked, <laughs> but now I've had a second to digest it. Do you know what the worst part of that is? Go on. But actually, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's the worst part. Is it sounds ridiculous. And it is. It is, yeah. But I'm not surprised by that. And that's that's embarrassing. That the fucking government should hang their head in shame that I I'm mean, able for... to even say that. <laughs> well, exactly. I mean, you're not exactly someone with a political axe to grind. But when you get frustrated and pissed off at this, just for yeah. anyone, by the way, anyone tuning in who is not particularly politically savvy and imagines like, oh, it's just that. That just happens all the time, doesn't it? This is the kind of thing you expect in a banana republic, right? So, in one of in one of these um, <clears throat> one of these very shaky democracies somewhere, usually that we've ravaged, like in in the Caribbean or somewhere like that, and you'll have a leader who grants favors to people who basically crawl up his arsehole. So, you know, millions are given out to this favoured person for doing something or other and millions are given out to this. And usually you look at them and you, and you laugh at them and go, oh, look at those silly tin pot countries handing out, you know, uh, however many thousands or millions to, to these ser public servants who, who don't really even do anything except tell the, tell the president how amazing he is. That's happening in this country. You know, unfortunately... There is a situation, i.e. the pandemic, that has legitimately allowed for emergency planning. So normally what you are supposed to do when the government is wanting <clears throat> the private sector to sort something out, like um, something, for instance, something that the private sector is better at, not just something that the public sector could do and they just farm it out anyway, but something that the, private, uh, the public sector doesn't really do, like make protective equipment, you, you tender it to contracts. So you advertise that you need this equipment and companies are invited to submit their offers to you say we'll do it for this much this is the equipment um give us a call and you usually get a minimum of three to five whatever and then you choose from there it should be completely transparent so that anyone who's 
outside of government looking to review it to make sure that there's no kind of whiff of you know a little bit of corruption there can look at it and go can you tell us how this decision was arrived at the, the ironic thing mike is <clears throat> when the government and by the way this isn't just the conservative government um, new labor was quite good at it as well when the government has a crony that they want to give a big contract to they can still go through the motions of doing a tendering process you know you can still say oh let's get another four companies to to submit offers because it's up to the government so they can just ignore the other four offers and say oh well it looks like our crony was the best offer so and then every nobody has a leg to stand on because even though it is still relatively corrupt you know you can't argue because well other companies had a chance with the emergency planning of the pandemic everything needed to be speeded up yeah unorthodox solutions sometimes you you go to companies you wouldn't otherwise but for fuck's sake you know the 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 breadth of you know this person is a is a tory brother-in-law this this person was his old neighbor and then you look at their companies and they have nothing to do with protective equipment until they were literally given the contract and it's like i mean you know i mean luckily we've got people fighting for this there's something called the good law project uh which is which is pushing to take legal action against the government for this because although we give the government powers to say listen you need ppe as quickly as possible we don't mind if you don't tender that does not give them carte blanche to hand out millions of pounds to their friends particularly when they don't fulfill the specifications of the contract so that's you know that that is being challenged but yeah hancock that's an absolute classic example i mean <laughs> I'd love to hear Piers Morgan interviewing him about that. <laughs> to be fair, yeah. To be fair, as much of a prick as Piers Morgan is, um, this is probably one thing that he is actually good for. It, oh, definitely. Stick him, stick him in a room or not in a room, is it? Stick him on a fucking chat web link with uh, with a politician and and just let him just let him go to town. <laughs> that's one thing he's good for you yeah. he is no he's very good <clears throat> as are we and unless there's anything to add mike that's that's pretty much um all the stuff we were going to chew over tonight um there we are we're we're, we're now in the winter of discontent how much discontent yeah. will follow um you know jury's out but it's <laughs> I mean, the the problem I have, Mike, the biggest problem I'm, I can see on on the around the corner is anyone who's looking forward to a fucking good Christmas, be aware that there will be consequences. January, for many many reasons, is not going to be a very nice month. So if I were you, I'd put into place some kind of plan to get you through January because it's going to be very bleak, even just with COVID, because as we me and mike have just discussed there's zero chance that there won't be a massive rise in transmission it's not going to be a good january january is seldom a good month for the majority however but just prepare yourselves don't don't be under some illusion that you've seen the back of 2020 so everything's going to be fine it isn't that just won't be the case yeah, that's a very, yeah. uh, very nice way of putting it, Mike. So get get yourself a project or something, something to completely take your mind off anything in January. The best thing you can do is do not pay attention to anything else because trust me, it's going to be fucking bleak. And there we are. That's laying our lives for this week. Anything to add, Mike? No, just the usual. Hit the subscribe, the like button. Tell Aaron he's a cunt. Do what you want. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, doc, Doc's Mike online, you know, <laughs> all the good stuff. And uh, and please stay safe and keep each other safe. And we will grow you next time. Maybe there might be something more positive because after all, tis the season and everything. <laughs> yeah. And until next time, goodbye. <laughs>